Celebrating 12 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Terry McDaniel. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. You'll meet my guest in just a moment, but I wanted to tell you about our set. You know, for 11 seasons, we had a big table, and now we have this beautiful set, courtesy of our friends down at Nouveau Classics. So welcome to this new look in this new feel. Now I want you to meet Terry McDaniel. Thank you for joining oh, us Thanks today. for having me. Appreciate it. You know what I got to say about you? Um, I know you more for God than football. Praise God. That's good to know. Y you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When, when I first heard about you, your legacy in the world of football was an oh-by-the-way legacy. Mm -hmm. I saw you in the barbershop, right? And so somebody was talking. I think I was talking to Gam. And I said, who's that gentleman right there? Because uh, you're lean and fit, and you have to be a man of a certain age. I'm an old guy, but you, based on when you played, I have an idea of how young you are, mm -hmm. right? So I saw you there at the barbershop, and he said, yeah, that guy really, he, he, uh, the first thing Gam told me about you was he said, yeah, he works out. He's, he really stays on top of taking care of his health, and he really loves the Lord, and he teaches Sunday school and all that stuff. And then he said, oh, by the way, and I said, that's Terry McDaniel? And then it all clicked, but that came after. And my understanding about you is that's just the way you want it. It really is. Yes. I'm all about Christ and trying to serve him and be the best example I can be for him. So everything I do is dedicated to him. Terry, how did you get there? Because from everybody that I've talked to, they've told me, you're going to have a hard time talking about football with that guy. He's just not... I mean, you played at the highest level. You played at the University of Tennessee. I think you were the ninth pick in the first round in 88. Yes. You went on to play for the Raiders for 10 seasons. Uh, you played for the Seattle Seahawks. You had that career. Uh, Pro Bowl, you did it all. And yet, you don't, would you please explain to me what's going on with that? Uh, well, actually, I was blessed. God has blessed me, watched over, and gave me a wonderful career. And actually just to be a young man or actually a child and had hopes and dreams of playing and see all my goals come to pass. And I know he led me through it all. And so I don't boast or think about the things I've done in the past. It's more if I, he allowed me to do it. And so I just thank him and praise God for him, for everything he's done. See, that's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that was, that was literally like 15 <laughs> seconds. Your whole career in 15 seconds. God allowed me to do it. Thank you very much. Where'd you grow up? Uh, Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw, Saginaw Michigan. Michigan. I was uh, born in Detroit. Uh, you were up in Saginaw. What was it like growing up there? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I enjoyed it. It was just I, I, lived, I moved there about when I was in the fourth grade. And so from there on to I graduated from high school. But the situation I was in, it was around the neighborhood and so forth. It wasn't a great neighborhood. And but people never exceeded or wanted people to hold people down far as saying, well, no one can make it from here and so right. forth. So you had that to go with, deal with. Right? Now, tell me about your parents. Mm -hmm. Well, I lost my mother when I was five years old. So I really grew really? up without a mother. And uh, my father just passed in uh, 2000. Yes. What kind of guy was he? Oh, a wonderful man. And he actually set a good tempo for me, a strict man. But actually, he allowed me to really grow up and be a man young. So I had a lot of choices to make on my own when I was young, but he had put enough discipline and showed, showed me the right way in a lot of areas, but still I had to make the choice to do things, and he trusted me. Give me an example of how strict he was. Huh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, actually, it's really making sure when he laid down his rules or his laws that we, uh, we stuck to it. And actually, at that time, it was me and my sister mainly are growing up with. So it was really our three was our core in our family, and he was more of just making sure what time we had to be in or doing this and that because he worked the second shift at the auto plant so we were there at GM at the time so and most of the time at night he wasn't there so and then to the times he got laid off so in the between time it was just me and my sister the majority of the time so a lot of choices I had to make I had to make on my own at early age so I had to see the, the wrong path and the right path each and every day and I had to make the choice of which path I was going to take. 
Wow, this is Terry McDaniel. You're watching Anything Is Possible. I want to I want to get into this thing that I've discovered about you in the lead up to this interview. You are a very determined man. When you set your mind on doing something, when you set a goal, mm -hmm. you don't let anything get in your way. I mean, I and I can feel that energy coming off of you that when you set a goal, you, that's what you work on mm -hmm. and you work on it and you see it through. I want to take a break when we come back. I want to talk about seeing goals through and where you got that drive. This is Anything is Possible. That's Terry McDaniel. He's a man of God. Oh, and by the way, he played football. All right. We'll talk about it in a moment. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. Even as I grew up, my position changed, but the goal stayed the same. I'm going to get there. Okay, I'm going to be a running back. Okay, I switched to receiver. Oh, now I'm going to be a receiver. Oh, okay, I'm a corner. I'll, I'll make it as a corner. So whatever the role was, the destination was still the same. The journey was a little different. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. Terry McDaniel spent 10 years playing for the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders. <laughs> and with the Seattle Seahawks, Pro Bowl. And uh, you live in Knoxville now, and you played at the University of Tennessee. Welcome yes, to the sir. broadcast. Well, thank you. W why did you land here in Knoxville? Well, actually, my wife's from in there. She's from Knoxville. So you just brought Mama back home. Yes. <laughs> and actually, when uh, my career ended, we were kind of wasn't sure because all our Lives, we knew we didn't want to live in California, which we enjoyed it, but we knew most of our people was here. Mine in Michigan, hers was here. So we were kind of debating where we were going to live, but we never thought about it. And all of a sudden, really, when my career ended, actually I was, went to Green Bay before I went to Seattle, and that didn't work out. And actually we had everything we owned on a moving truck on the way to Green Bay, and next thing you know, it didn't happen in Green Bay. So we kind of had the truck stop in, I think it's Chicago, saying, hey, don't, don't bring that stuff here. We're not going to be here. <laughs> so we kind of... I called people in, uh, at back home in Saginaw, she called some people in here, and it was really the first one that found somebody that was going to find <laughs> somewhere to just let us sit down for a minute to figure out how we wanted to do this. Because my house was already on for sale in California, so we didn't want to go back. Couldn't there. go back. So then the, the next week, Seattle called, so the truck came into Knoxville. Actually, first, her sister found somebody, and they, they had five houses lined up just like that for us to look at the rent. So we came, we found the spot, and by the time we found it, Seattle called, I left. <laughs> Her family helped get the things settled, and when I got settled in Seattle, they came on up. Wow. So it was a route that way to get here to Knoxville. When did you find football? I would say about the fourth grade, when I, when I moved to Michigan. I knew a little about it beforehand, but when I got to Saginaw, I started playing and took it to heart. Did you know then, I'm going to play pro? Actually, I did. I really did. My mind was set, and I said, this is going to happen, and I was going to do whatever it takes to, to make it happen. I, I have a letter. I don't know if it was somewhere in elementary that you know you write a little letter in class. And, what I'm going to be? Yes, and it was the, playing the National Football League. So what did you believe that it was going to take? My all. And I knew it would come to pass. It just was I was going to continue to work at it. Even as I grew up, my position changed, but the goal stayed the same. I'm going to get there. Okay, I'm going to be a running back. Okay, I switched to receiver. Oh, now I'm going to be a receiver. Oh, okay. I'm a corner. I'll, I'll make it as a corner. So whatever the role was, the destination was still the same. The journey was a little different. I love the answer you just gave me. I love that answer. That, that, that is the answer of the week for me. When I said, I was expecting you to give me the... Um, I got to do wind sprints twice a day. I got to do, you know, this much in the gym. I got to do study film. You didn't say any of that. You know what you said? You said, my all. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's a great that's answer. All right. <laughs> that, is, that is an all right answer. Mm -hmm. How did that play out, though, and actually what you had to do in the gym? And how did you have to focus on the game? What does it mean to give your all in the game? Actually, all what you're saying, preparing, it's a, it's a long road. Everyone wants to see the end Did road. you do extra? Yes, I did. Even, like, what would you do? Example, just so, even when it, high school-wise, growing up, even track was kind of a way to open a lot of doors for me. Even though we would run, have a set program, after I would run at home, at, at school rather, I'm running home at night. I'd go home and stretch some more and go out on the park road because I stayed across the street from a park, had a nice little park road and go out and focus on getting better and knowing the competition I had and picture myself 
putting it to him. So <laughs> not saying like that, but you had to put those goals out there. I got to go get them. So. <laughs> so, so do you remember your first game in the NFL? Do you remember what it was like on draft day in 1988? And yes, you're, I did. And you're the ninth pick. So this is first round ninth pick. Do you remember that feeling? Yes, it was a, a time of excitement, but at the same time, it was like, hey, there's no sure thing. And for me, everybody around me, a lot of people didn't see me as being a high draft pick, or some even being drafted. But on draft day, I knew one certain team had told me that, hey, if they get to that pick, uh, that we're going to take you. But somebody could tell you that, but you don't know. So to me, it wasn't going to be a shaking situation until after I got to that pick. So, right. But uh, it showed you how blessed I was because at the time, uh, well, we played a lot of man there at Tennessee, a lot of bump and run, so I really enjoyed it. And I knew that was a style the Raiders played. So me playing for the Raiders like was like a perfect fit. And just to see that come to pass, like, wow, there we go. Just another desire, some dream just comes to pass just like that. How fast were you? I was pretty fast. <laughs> but time-wise, I, really, didn't, I didn't get the time much in college because you hear so many times, a lot of our 40 times was doing uh, winter workouts. And by me running track at uh, Tennessee, I never did one in workout. So I don't even know. I don't recall. I probably had, but getting timed at the 40 at Tennessee. Because right. every time they do it, I was actually running track. But what my about best time ever was a 4.28, if I'm Ooh. not mistaken. Yeah. And what are you running right now? I don't know. I, yeah, I, you I do. Can, <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> Myself couldn't say anything over a 4.5. That's what my mind said. I don't know if my body <laughs> I, I can't say anything over a 4.5. Now, when, when you got out on the field, uh, you're a Pro Bowl guy, you're in the NFL playing corner. Mm -hmm. um, what's the science of playing that position? Attitude. Uh, really? Yes. You just got that attitude. That, hey, I'm, I got to own mine. I got to take care of my business no matter what. And you, no matter what else is going around the whole field, I got to take care of my job. You get the huddle call, you go over your progressions up, down the distance, know the position, how the alignment, then at go through the steps of what you need to do next. And I'm focused on what I got to do. So people talk about the crowd noise and all that. To me, once I get going, I got to take care of my business. That's mm. Man, you are teaching me so much right now mm. about life. I'm just using football as a way to get to mm -hmm. the wisdom you have about life because um, I know how much you love God, right? Yes, sir. And. I know when I ask you, what does it take in that relationship, we can use the same answer, my all. Yes, sir. That's it. And I got to play my position. Mm -hmm. I got to handle my <laughs> business. I mean, do you see that? Yes, I do. Yes. I, I, uh, see, that's the character thread I see in you is that you made up your mind about football. Mm -hmm. You were willing to pay whatever that price was to get there. You knew your assignment. You were on point. But when you made up your mind in 1994, was it? Yes, sir. That you got saved? Mm -hmm. You decided that you were going to give God your all, that you were going to learn your position, and you were going to play it. You put it all together. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I taught a lesson uh, well, years ago. I really studied it, so it wasn't a, something originally I had. But I looked at it and looked at the lesson and took and prepared it to look at it for my life. And it all connected in those making a decision and not just a decision, but a definite decision. And, and you know, that was a part of me. I made a decision when I was young. I would play, play football, I would play in the National Football League. And from that uh, definite decision, I actually went to, I had to be disciplined. So some things you had to shed off and sh keep yourself from and that, you know, I got to be disciplined to get to this goal that happened. First, I've made this decision. Now to make it happen, I got to be disciplined to make it happen. And then went from that uh, discipline to devotion. So now I got to be devoted to daily to what I need to do to get there so that the discipline comes back, but it goes back to that decision I made. And then you finish it up with determination. And the determination brings it all together. I'm gonna be determined to stay disciplined and then to have the devotion to make it happen. And then it all goes back to scripture, then you go back to Luke 9, 23. And see, to anyone come after me, he must fo to follow me, he must take up his uh, cross and follow me daily. And see, when you put all that together, you're making a decision. I made a decision to serve Christ. And then I'm, making, I'm, I'm going to be disciplined to do what I have to do to please him. And then it comes that devotion to say daily. So each and every day as I study now, I'm studying the word growing in Christ so I can stay to the decision I've made. And then the determination makes it all happen. I'm determined. Whatever it takes, you got to, I'm giving it my all each and every day. So now I do that. The same thing that got me there is the same thing here. But now for a better cause. 
Um, old folks used to have a song, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, <laughs> turn me round. <laughs> I used to hear the old folks sing yes, that. Sir. Keep on to Calvary. That's, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more. Terry McDaniel yes, is with us. Uh, he's a lockdown corner. Don't throw it over here. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. They said they had him on life support, I guess, to say it was a chance, but odds was he wasn't gonna make it through it that night. And then to go see there and to see my sister there couldn't speak and seeing him in that situation, hoping and praying that he would come out of it, which it, it didn't happen. This week, our home federal community spotlight is on junior achievement of Tennessee. Did you know that last year, J.A. served more than 17,000 students in the classroom, after school, and at BizTown? To learn more, visit jaeasttennessee.org. I got to tell you, this has been one joy-filled episode of Anything is Possible, and you are a teacher. You are a teacher. I, let me just make sure I understand. By the way, this is Terry McDaniel, uh, and he's joining us on the broadcast. Played at UT, played for the Raiders, played for the Seahawks, um, and he plays for Christ now. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said you've got to make a definite decision, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Once you make that definite decision, you have to then be disciplined. Be disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, once you have that discipline, it has to be a continuous discipline yes, that sir. shows up daily, and that, that is shown by devotion. Yes, sir. So you're devoted to that discipline. Mm -hmm. And what drives your devotion, what, what helps you show up on the days you don't want to show up, mm -hmm. what makes you run full out every route, though they're never throwing the ball your way, is the determination. Yes, sir. Right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. but all of that, none of those other things happen until you make, make a decision. definite decision. Yes, sir. Right, and you wanted to reset uh, the verse from Luke. Yes, Luke 9, Because he even wanted to make sure he got the verse right. He said, I, I gotta get it right. Luke 9, 23, if, if, any, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And that's what daily. you do. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, what's the toughest thing you've had to press through in your life? Mm, toughest thing. Actually, uh, when my sister had a car accident, actually uh, the day before a game, we were actually in Oakland at the time. We were flying to play Chicago. And on the, the day before the game, she had a one car accident with her and her son. Um, so it was my nephew. And this, I just found out while I was in the hotel. And I think it was about an hour, two hours away from where we were. So I had to go and actually deal with the situation. Didn't know how serious it was till I got there. We actually, they were saying that I had lost my nephew. Mm. But they said they had him on life support, I guess, to say it was a chance, but odds was he wasn't gonna make it through it that night. And then to go see there and to see my sister there, couldn't speak and seeing him in that situation, hoping and praying that he would come out of it, which it, it didn't happen. And then just for the whole atmosphere and then at the same time- He didn't I, come out of it? No, he didn't. I ended up losing my uh, nephew that, 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 that weekend, yes. And then you had to still go yes. play? And I, yes, and I, it was a choice, but it was kind of, my father and him gave me, okay, I could still do this, because. Every, nothing I could do that time. And I think he didn't pass that next day, but right. within those days, I, that whole thing is kind of not confusing, but don't remember step by step. So I went back, I don't know if it was a couple hours out and came back. So I probably didn't, well, no sleep that night, just came back and really just did what I did. And I trained myself, that determination has given me so much that it's in me that I just got to go do it. So just to play that game with all those emotions and knowing what's going on and what, what is going on with my family on the backside of that. That was, that was probably, tough. it was, it was really tough. Tell me yes. about your family. Yes, oh, wonderful wife, wonderful wife, which you, we know that's why I'm here Absolutely. in Knoxville. God has blessed me and it, it really shows the blessings of God even there because I have a wife, we've been married now 25 years, going on 26 years and a wonderful marriage, two beautiful kids. My daughter just graduated from UT in December, so she's out job hunting <laughs> and my son's getting ready to graduate now from high school and he's uh, actually going to be a preferred walk on here at UT, so he's going to try to go in that direction and God has blessed me with both of them and just the life that they're living and God has just touched them and I just thank him for them each and every day. It's so it's family. Shayla and Isaiah? Shayla and Isaiah, yes. Uh, Isaiah is a biblical name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why'd you name him Isaiah? 
the clo- as our as our walks went, because when uh, my uh, daughter was born, I was just getting into the word, and then actually I was in the word when my son was born. So, and it just wanted a good, solid biblical name, and just for everything that Isaiah meant for him, and just wanted to set the stage for him his whole life, and just constantly now pouring scripture into both of them, and actually my wife does the same, and and she's our, my everything. So my best friend, whatever you name, she's there for me, and. I can't say enough about my family. I'm excited about it. God has blessed me tremendously with them, and praise God. That's awesome, man. You you actually started blushing when you started talking about your wife. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is wonderful. I, I think, I mean, you've taught me so much about possibility in this conversation. Um, and, and these are great takeaways for anybody watching today. Um, what does it take? It takes your all. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Um, and then you came back and you said, I had to do my job. I can't mm-hmm. be distracted by the crowd, whoever this person says, that person says, I have an assignment. I have to do that without regard to this, that, or the other. Mm-hmm. Then you dropped the four D's on us, <laughs> you know, making a definite decision, mm-hmm. having that discipline, that devotion, and that determination. And, yes, you know, Man, I'm glad we didn't talk about football. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we got that out of the way <laughs> because everything that you described really is um, the seed corn, if you will, of possibility. That's what makes anything possible. Yes, sir. And if you get that relationship with yourself and with God and your family right, and then you apply um, uh, you apply yourself to those four D's, and I was just thinking about you played played D. <laughs> I'm, I'm knitting it all again. You gotta you gotta coordinate, and your name is Terry Mac Daniel, so yes, it's all it's all together. Thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate you are a real testament to the fact that uh, anything is possible, and man, I'm inspired by having you here today. Thank you so well, thank much. You. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time on Anything Is Possible.